Version 6 is so impressive, but the difference between a Midjourney user who knows what they're doing and a Midjourney user who struggles to make good use out of the feature set is profound. Midjourney has been changing a lot, and just the other day, they posted the alpha version of their brand new web interface. You can only access it if you've created more than 5,000 images in Midjourney. So if you are a Midjourney veteran, this is the perfect time to catch up and learn the features and techniques that let you create the best images possible on this tool. And if you're brand new, well, there is still no better day than today to get started. Midjourney is more powerful than it's ever been before, and this video will be the perfect guide to make sure you can take full advantage of its amazing capabilities. So let's see what we're working with. This is Midjourney's brand new interface on alpha.midjourney.com, and I'm loving it. It's such a fun and slick way to generate images. Up here, you have the place to put your prompts and type anything in, generate it, and you can watch as it comes together. Unlike Discord, you're not scrolling through tons and tons of things. Everything is in this very clean interface that fills your whole screen, and you can really see what's going on, what you've generated, and how it all came together. But the truth is, the biggest changes to Midjourney over the past couple months have nothing to do with the interface. Instead, there has been a huge shift in the most fundamental part of creating images. As you know, if you want to create amazing images, you have to write a great prompt. Writing prompts has actually changed a lot as new versions of Midjourney has been released. There was a time when the best thing you could do was write something basic and then just list a series of tags that improve the quality. In version six, prompts like this still work, but there's something off about the results and we can definitely do better. Version 4 prompts relied on a neat little feature called multi-prompting, and this was the first time you really got fine control over the images you were generating in Midjourney. What you do is write descriptions of your subject, give that prompt the highest weight, and add these little characters to create a multi-prompt so that you could blend that prompt with secondary descriptions of your style. Adding a number let you give it a lower weight, and adding more prompts let you specify the quality and mood of your image without detracting from your highest weighted prompt the subject. And if there were artifacts or weirdness, you would also be able to add negative prompts to get rid of them. Again, all this still works in version six, but it's clunky, a lot of work, and multi-prompts can really confuse the model nowadays. Do you see these? What used to work as style hints can now lead to visible photography equipment or visible paint brushes or pencils when you really just wanted to see something photographic or artistic. So we evolve again, and today this is the format I use. I write between two and three full sentences describing the visual nature of my scene. Then I list tags that push the style, mood, and vibe in the direction I want to go. In this part, the full sentences, I make sure I hit four checkboxes. I need to describe the style of image I want, or at least the medium it was created in. I describe the subject or main focus of my scene. I clearly describe the background, and I mention the lighting and color conditions. This much detail written in plain English is important now because Midjourney is finally able to understand the relationships between objects, lighting, and color. If you don't explain what is being worn versus what's being held versus what's been suspended in an ice block, Midjourney will have no idea where to put things and how they work together. So by writing these sentences to describe the image, you can clarify a lot of things Midjourney might make guesses at, and in so doing, get a lot closer to what you were really after. Older versions of Midjourney really couldn't do this at all. So I consider this an upgrade, even if it's a little bit more work. Tags are similar. In version six, they have evolved quite a bit. You no longer need tags to indicate that images are HD, award-winning, or high quality. These concepts are finally built into the weights of the model, and so you can treat them as basically assumed. What version six needs are pushes in the right direction. You use tags so that you can adjust the feeling of an image without changing those sentences you wrote. If you ever use the old style of prompting, you know tags are great, mostly because they're so easy to rewrite. If you don't like the impact purple ambiance had on your image, you can swap it out, change it, or delete it altogether. And if you're listening to me talking and shaking your head because writing these sentences or coming up with tags seems like a lot of work to you, I get it. 
and I totally agree with you. The truth is, I hardly ever write problems from scratch anymore, because instead, I use ChatGPT to do it for me. If you don't know, I created one of the most popular GPTs in AI art generation. It's called the Glibetry Art Designer. You might have already seen it, because in the first couple days when the GPT store came out, it actually climbed to the top 12 trending out of more than 3 million GPTs. And today, it's still on the front page. Admittedly, a little farther down in the Dali section. Basically, now I, and more than 100,000 of you, use it to automatically write mid-journey prompts in the exact format I just described. To use it, you do need to be a ChatGPT Plus subscriber, but watch how it makes this so easy. Instead of actually writing a prompt, you can describe your idea to my GPT like you're having a conversation, no matter how much thought you've given to the idea so far. You could get as specific as saying dogs wearing capes on their birthday, and you get prompts in my format that create these images. But you could also be as vague as saying just make me artwork that I would hang on my wall, and it comes up with this diverse set of images. Not to mention, the four prompts you get are in code blocks, so it makes it so easy to click copy, and paste them right into Midjourney. And as you can see, they are perfectly formatted. And on top of that, all four prompts are automatically generated as DALI images as well, and my GPT brainstorms even more ideas for what else you might want to generate next. All based on what you initially sent it, simple or complex. Having done this for you is a game changer because it lets you take ChatGPT's idea and workshop it instead of having to start at the very beginning. Obviously, you can workshop it by changing the sentences or rewriting the tags. I think you get how this works now that you understand the format. You can adjust the subject and leave everything the same, or keep the subject and change the background, or keep both but change the tags to make the image horror style or maybe artistic or just fun and happy. Once you're comfortable playing around with the prompts, the next thing you'll need to understand is all the tools that come packaged with Midjourney. Over the past few months, Midjourney has been giving you more and more options to control the end result of your image. And just the other day, they updated Midjourney so that those tools apply to version 6 as well, which is so amazing. Come take a look at these in the new UI. You're probably familiar with parameters. There are only a few parameters that are fundamental to how Midjourney interprets prompts. And now, in the new UI, they put them front and center. Click this little button. You get sliders for each one. I'll run through each of these very quickly and edit in the results to visually show you how they affect the image. This is the aspect ratio, and it does what you think. It changes the width and height of the four images you're about to generate. The style factor, here, lets Midjourney's engine take over and creatively beautifies the image. The higher the value is, the higher the impact. This is powered by Midjourney's rating system, so it's based on a somewhat averaged out idea of a beautiful aesthetic. The weird factor is sort of the opposite. By using it, you're telling Midjourney how far you're allowed to push the boundaries of the accepted aesthetic. The higher it gets, the more quirks Midjourney will introduce. This is the chaos factor. It sounds the same, but it's a little bit different. It controls how different the four images should be from one another. If it's low, Midjourney will stick to one basic interpretation of your prompt. The higher you set this value, the more Midjourney will do to interpret your prompts in four different ways. The mode option here lets you turn off the style tuning, so if you know what you're doing, raw mode might let you have a little more control over the output based on the prompt, but it's also more likely to mess up some of the details than in Standard. Notably, Standard will be better at eyes, fingers, horizons, and reflections. So again, stick to Standard unless you really know what you're doing. Version lets you switch to any of the older versions or other models, which right now is just the Niji models, which were trained for creating animated or cartoon style images. So this is what that does. Speed lets you speed up or slow down your generations, which depending on your mid-journey plan, can make the GPU minutes cost per image go up or down. But this has no actual impact on the quality of the image you get at the end. So yeah, these are the most important parameters. You might also know there are a few more parameters than what are available here. You can read up on those in the documentation by clicking View Help, Documentation, 
commands, parameters, and tools, then open up parameters. If I was going to suggest one, I'd have you read up on what dash dash no does and also about dash dash quality. These are all cool, but what I think you're really going to care about is the options you have when you've already generated an image. On the web interface, you can click any one of your own images and all of the options show up in the bottom right. Of course, you love to see variations and upscales. These are the bread and butter of Midjourney. But the key features here that really open up the door into what's possible are pan and zoom. Being able to look left and look right and up and down, as well as being able to zoom out, gives you precise control over something that used to be totally lacking from Midjourney. And that is the composition of your final image. Not only can you generate an image, but now you can explore that entire world, especially since in Discord you aren't constrained to two options for an amount to zoom. So by clicking custom zoom, you can zoom out by 1.35x and then pan to the right and then zoom out by 1.8x more. Doing this lets me put my character exactly in the part of the image where I want him. And with remix mode on, something you can access by typing slash settings in Discord, you're able to change the prompt as you go. So while I'm zooming out, I can make adjustments to the scene. And if you get how this works, the flexibility is amazing. Just watch as I zoom out here while this happy little swan turns into a Halloween nightmare. Now, those are cool and really open up the possibilities, but not nearly as much as this last feature that really turns you into a wizard. And by that, I mean has actually turned me into a wizard. If you watch my other videos, you might be able to guess I'm talking about my new favorite feature, Very Region. This is the feature that lets you erase a part of an image and regenerate just that portion. And with Remix mode on, well, that means you can change the prompt for the part you're regenerating. This feature, of course, lets you generate something and clean up any part of it you didn't love. You can fix up text that ended up being spelled incorrectly, remove something, give a cat sunglasses, or if you have a prefer option set up for your favorite character, you can erase whoever it is you just generated and put your favorite character in that scene instead. I have a whole video teaching you how to do that, and version 6 is so powerful it makes this so much easier. I hope now that we're near the end of this video, you feel more confident about writing amazing prompts and combining Midjourney's tools to create great images. Midjourney has slowly been turning into the feature-rich art tool I always dreamed it would become. Please, go ahead and try out my GPT. I promise it makes everything I just taught you so much easier to get into and try. Before we go, I do want to highlight one more part of the Midjourney documentation, which is the commands. Mostly, these are quality of life things. Right now, they only work in Discord, but they can really speed up your workflow if you're creating lots of art. The truth is, if you want to be a Midjourney pro, you should really be familiar with every option, parameter, tool, and command. And you know what I think? I think the best way to start is by watching this video next. See you there.